Come on. Here. Hi. Up. Oops. Here we go. One more. Oh, you're not very good. Hello, everybody. It's good to see you today. We're in Psalm uh, 42, verse 5. The psalmist says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God. I'm sure that based on the law of averages, there are at least some who are listening in to our devotional today and you're discouraged, you're downcast, maybe depressed, maybe even in despair. One famous preacher said concerning the Christian that discouragement and depression are the Christian's chief occupational hazards. A.W. Tozer said, we are not living in a playground, we are in a battleground. And there are so many things that can get into our minds and into our hearts and really discourage us and depress us. And I'm sure that somebody that's listening in today, you're discouraged. Maybe you've prayed for years for a particular loved one or for a particular need in your life. And that prayer maybe still hasn't been realized. Maybe you're the only Christian in your family. Maybe there are financial troubles, problems in the workplace, health concerns, family trials, or maybe just things that you don't understand, but all you know is that there are times whenever you are discouraged and depressed. And those emotions are very real. It's important, of course, to make the right lifestyle choices, to minimize the potential for depression and for discouragement. Sometimes, if we're honest, we make wrong choices, we get into wrong habits, and we maybe don't exercise enough, we don't eat well, different things like that. But sometimes there are other factors that cause us to be discouraged. And here the psalmist speaks to his own heart and says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? He didn't know why he was feeling the way he was, but all he knew was his soul was cast down. He certainly wasn't on a mountaintop experience. Rather, it seems that he had been thrust down into the valley and maybe found it very difficult to pick himself up again. You know, some of the greatest preachers and missionaries in world history suffered from discouragement and depression. Even C.H. Spurgeon himself, the prince of preachers who virtually lived in perpetual revival, experienced oftentimes bouts of melancholy or depression. Same with David Brainerd, the Native American, or the missionary to the Native American Indians, the hymn writer William Cooper, who wrote great hymns, There is a fountain filled with blood, drawn from Emmanuel's veins, God moves in a mysterious way. He was a man that experienced oftentimes deep depression. William, or Alexander Cruden, who penned the concordance, was the same. Even D.L. Moody, who seemed to have a rather jovial outlook in life and a, a joyous heart, often because of a seeming lack of success, suffered from discouragement. Now here the psalmist says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? He doesn't know why. Why art thou disquieted within me? That just indicates he had no peace. And yet he spoke to himself and challenged himself and encouraged himself, Hope thou in God. He had to remind himself to do the most basic things in his experience as a believer. To put his hope and his faith and his trust continually in his God. That even if I can't trace God, I can still trust him. Even if my heart is heavy, I still need to trust God and look to the hills and look to the Lord and put my hope and my trust in him. Sometimes whenever we're discouraged or depressed, we seem to lose sight of God. And our faith seems to be so small. And we forget to do the most simple things like just trusting and hoping in the Lord. God is the hope of every Christian. And then he looks forward and says, I shall yet praise him for the help of his countenance. David knows that there's a bright future ahead for him as a believer. There's a better day coming. 
he knows that the Lord will bring him out of this. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. He's presently cast down, presently discouraged, maybe just like you today, but reminds himself, I need to lift my eyes off myself and off my circumstances, meditate upon the Lord, think about the Lord, talk to the Lord, fellowship with God, and afresh put my faith and trust and confidence in him who never fails because there's a day coming whenever I will praise him and joy will come back into my heart and into my life. There's something about praise, there's something about worship, even whenever we don't feel like it, that lifts our hearts and lifts our spirits. You discouraged today, downcast, maybe depressed. Lift your heart to God in prayer and in praise. Why not read a psalm just after this is over? Take down an old hymn book and sing, even uh, just in the quiet place, some of those lovely old hymns, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. When I survey the wondrous cross, oh, for a thousand tongues to sing, how deep the Father's love for us. And praise him and worship him. And we trust that God will lift your heart today and give you a real sense of your standing in Christ. God bless you all. Thank you for listening.